In order to reduce the size of the grid, we have to relax the constraints of our barycentric representation and find a so-called weak barycentric representation. The definition is almost the same as before, so we still want to find barycentric coordinates that sum up to a 1, and we have some constraint for every edge and every other vertex. Before, we had to find one index such that z is larger in this index than both of x and y. Now we don't need exactly that, but something close. Now we want z to be lexicographically larger for k and k plus 1 than both of them. What does that mean? That means that either zk is larger than yk, or they are exactly the same, but then zk plus 1 must be larger than yk plus 1. So they can lie on the same line as here. So z1 here is larger than y1, and z1 is exactly the same as x1. But it is closer to b, so z2 is larger than x2. That means that lexicographically this is still larger. So that means it can lie inside this triangle or here. It can lie inside this triangle or here. Or it can lie inside this triangle or here. And that gives us all these shaded areas plus the boundary of this. That means that instead of this whole triangle being forbidden now, only the inside of this triangle is forbidden. The rest is exactly the same. But even for these weak barycentric representations, we can show that the mapping gives us a planar drawing inside this triangle. This is very similar to the proof that we did before for barycentric, and you will do this proof as an exercise. We now want to use a slightly different strategy to get weak barycentric representation. But still, we use the same concept. We do a Schnuder labeling in the Schnuder realizer, and for every vertex, we get our three paths and our three regions. But instead of counting how many faces we have in each region, now we only count how many vertices are in these regions. But if we count all the vertices in each region, then those vertices on the paths we would count twice, so we only assign them to one of those. That means that in region 1 we have the interior vertices plus the vertices here, so we have all the vertices inside this region, except this. So for vi we have number of vertices in R1 minus number of vertices on path 3. Here we have all the vertices here minus p1, here we have all the vertices here minus p2. So in this example v1 we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 vertices, but we have 3 on this path, so it's a 7. For V2, we have 1, 2, 3 vertices here, those we don't count, so we have a 3. And for V3, we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 vertices, not these 3, so we have a 5. And now, for every interior vertex, it holds that if it lies in some region, like here, then lexicographically for this index the numbers are smaller. Now we know from earlier that if u lies in region 1 of v, then the region 1 of u is a proper subset of the region 1 of v. And that means that in most cases even the first part here is true. If u is in the interior of region 1, we get a smaller subregion of this, and now u also lies on path p3. So if we just add up the number of interior vertices and the vertices on path 2, that cannot be more than we had before at v. The same also happens if u lies on p2 here. Even if we only cut off the minimum amount, this one, now u will also be on path p3, so we will remove it from this part. So it only gets smaller. The only case is that u lies on path p3. And now if we only cut off the minimum part like this, then the number of interior vertices is the same and the number of vertices on p2 is the same as before. 
and we don't remove more for you because it was already on p3. And in that case, the number is exactly the same. But then we look to the next area, to this one here. And here it's exactly the same situation as if you was on that point. And for that we already know that the number truly has to become smaller, so the second part of this expression is true, and we have the lexicographic order. And the second is, what happens if we sum up all these numbers? Well, every vertex lies in the interior of a region, or on a path from V to the outside. Those interiors are counted clearly once, those on the path are also only counted once, because we count P3 only for R2 and P1 only for R3 and so on, and V is never counted, because it always lies on this path that we remove. So the sum of all these numbers we get is exactly n minus 1. But now there's one more slight difference to before. We will not have the vertices exactly on the corners of the triangle. So if we look at the number for a, we get this region. There's all the vertices except these two, so we get n minus 2. Then we see the green edge that is part of the blue region. So if we count the vertices in the blue region, then we don't count A, but we count C. So we get a 1 here. And in the green region we have nothing, so this is a 0. That now defines us the improved Schnuder drawings, where we get to the n-2 times n-2 grid. So we set again A to be 0, 0, B to be now n-1, 0, and C to be 0, n-1, we take these three numbers, we know they sum up to exactly n minus 1, so we can divide them by n minus 1. This gives us the barycentric coordinates, and we can draw the whole thing. Oh, again, the same example, we have 16 vertices, so n minus 2 is 14, means we need a 14 by 14 grid, and the green and blue numbers give us the 2D coordinates. Now for a, we said we have n minus 2, 1, 0, so we place it here. b, it's exactly the same, we have 0, n minus 2, 1, so we place it here. And for c, we have 1, 0, n minus 2, so we place it here. So everything will lie inside this triangle. And now let's go through the whole graph. In this area here, we count exactly one vertex, which is a. And in this area here, we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 vertices. So we get to 7, 1. Here we count 1, 2 vertices. And here we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have 7, 2. Here it's, a, it's the same. We have 3 vertices. And here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we go here. And the same way we can continue, we always count for the y-coordinate how many vertices in the interior of the green and on this path. And for the blue, so for the x-coordinate, how many interior vertices on this and on this path. And that way we get all the coordinates we need and in the very end a planar drawing. And again in the exercises you will show that this drawing is indeed planar. So we've proven this result except for the running time, which we will do in the next part. And there's one more variation I want to tell you about first. Last time you heard about the Krobach and Kant variation of the canonical order, where we get n-2 times n-2 area and faces convex. There's also such a variation for the Schnuder algorithm by Stefan Felsner, where we get f minus 1 times f minus 1 area, where f is the number of faces, and also all of them are convex.